Uh, well, thank you for joining us for the Fireside Chat with Wise Key International. Uh, with me today is Carlos Marrera, uh, founder and CEO. Um, you know, th thank you for uh, also for joining us. And uh, why don't we jump right in, uh, Carlos? Give us a brief brief overview. What is Wise Key? What are your primary businesses? Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Great to be with you again. So, yeah, so Wiseki is a cybersecurity IoT company based in Switzerland in the United States. We also have offices in the United States. And Wiseki has been uh, very focused on cybersecurity as a way of authenticating objects and, and people communications, right? So our core business has been uh, started with PKI, public infrastructure, and evolve uh, subsequently with IoT as we also design our microchips Then we put inside objects. This is the uh, internet of thing, uh, interconnectiveness of objects. And then uh, we added different layers of technology that allows basically objects to connect to the cloud in a, in a seamless way and, and totally secure. So uh, very uh, important niche now, as, as, as you know, we, we are connecting uh, 2 trillion devices to the internet. All these devices require security. If you have one device that does not have security, it compromises the rest of the devices. So uh, network integrity is, is essential. And uh, with our technology, uh, we are able uh, to uh, provide a, a identity management at the uh, device level. So imagine a drone, satellite or a router or a uh, mobile phone all these objects require that level of security so um 1.6 billion devices are already secure by wise key or cryptographic root key which is the uh software component is already installed in 6 billion devices so this is a dominant root key it's like uh, rsa or verisign or digicert in the united states um because you need an end-to-end -end encryption, uh, the root key issues a uh, identity for the device, which is stored in a uh, um, semiconductor, is a secure element that you put inside the object. And the secure element issues an identity, and that identity is the one you collect in a cloud, could be uh, Amazon Cloud, could be uh, Azure, could be any any open cloud. And that identity is the one, and then you verify it to ensure that the object is, is the genuine object, object. So endless applications, uh, very important in uh, industries that they are being threatened now, like uh, hospital infrastructures, like um, military infrastructure, like uh, in some cases, um, traffic lights uh, and anything which could be hacked. You know, the uh, hacking that has been announced by the U.S. Uh, government a few uh, days ago was actually targeting uh, critical infrastructure because normally critical infrastructure do not have this decentralized process. Basically, the, uh, the uh, security is provided at the uh, database level, so they have very large databases and provide security. Uh, but if you hack the database, then obviously you hack everything else, right? So decentralization of the identity through uh, blockchain technology ledgers and the possibility of of not having everything in one place is something that we provide to our clients. Thank you. And for the less technical among us, you know, I think you gave a great overview and concept of how PKI works, but could you get a little, you know, what is PKI? What does it really mean for, for a user like me or you? You know, how does that, how does it create authenticity or how does it create security for me? So, I mean, PKI is, is basically similar to what you do in the physical world. Uh, let's say then you open a, a, a box with a bank, you have a, a key, then you keep yourself and a key, then the bank keeps themselves and you need both keys in order to open your, your safe box, right? So, so you do that in, in the same way by uh, providing a key to the person, uh, which is your key. This is not a password, this is a digital certificate that is only owned by you and uh, nobody else has ownership on that. So that certificate basically establishes your digital identity. And that certificate is synchronized, is trusted by the root key, which is the one that the infrastructure provides, right? So uh, when you have both, uh, you can encrypt emails, uh, you can digitally sign a PDF file. Um, you don't even need any app like DocuSign and things like that on the top because you have uh, the possibility of using uh, open software. You can 
can uh, you can just uh, download any email uh, application and uh, digitally sign your email. So if I if I digitally sign an email where let's say I offer you to buy my house and I PDF sign that email with my digital certificate, I create a binding um, transactions with you, which is not possible with any other technology. Uh, so so this technology has been there for many years. I mean, we are talking about 35 years. Uh, PKI has been um, the, the technology that now RSA, very science, Symantec, all this company have deployed. All the major um, secrets of the world are kept by PKI, right? Uh, so uh, what is what is interesting now and why PKI is hot again is because uh, PKI at the beginning was only for identity of people. So that means uh, securing your communications, securing your email, securing your data. Whether now PKI has been expanded to IoT, to Internet of Things. So now the same way we can encrypt the communication between uh, email exchange. Now we can encrypt the communication between the drone and the station, and that communication will uh, uh, authorize the drone to have several functions that only the person which is authenticated to have access to those functions will be able to execute them, right? So um, the IoT is, is, is basically creating a new paradigm. Now, another interesting thing on PKI that blockchain technology can also be used before PKI was centralized in databases where you keep the certificate, we call that certification authorities, whether now the new design WiseKey is applying is using blockchain decentralized ledger as a way to store the keys. So uh, if you have your digital identity stored in a decentralized ledger, uh, you can uh, point anyone to that ledger to verify your identity without the need for you to disclose uh, the, the certificate. So uh, very new ways of using um, uh, certificates with blockchain, which by the way is the foundational architecture also for nfts you know because now you can uh digitally um, sign an object and create an nft directly by minting the identity of the object on the blockchain so you go from very traditional method of of securing things to very new methods of providing verification in digitalized blockchain ledgers very interesting um well since you brought up uh nfts i i have to ask um uh, you recently, I think, minted the first NFT from space. Uh, I, I think that was the uh, the event. So talk to me a little bit. Uh, what does that mean? I, I think you launched some satellites. Um, uh, how does that all come together? So, so in that in that view, that uh, everything needs to be verifiable, uh, real time. So, um, if you put a microchip into a parcel, into a container in the sea, into uh, into a, um, a a box, into a, a hardware. You don't want to use 5G to verify real time, it would be too expensive. And in some areas, 5G will not even be possible uh, and will be um, cumbersome. So the, the, the final destination for verification is a space, right? Because so it's cheaper and is everywhere. You can verify objects in, in the middle of the sea, in, in the desert, uh, pipelines. Uh, you can verify objects anywhere. So the um, Weisky, uh with the SpaceX uh, beginning of this year launch of Pico satellites. So those are IoT satellites. They are very tiny satellites and they are used to verify real time from space the uh, identity which is stored in the microchip. So, so, so that means that the satellite, uh, which goes around Earth uh, on on daily basis, uh, through a constellation of those satellites, um, can real time pick up the uh, signal that is sent by the key, which is storing the object, and then the satellite sends uh, a message back saying, "Yes, the, the object is trusted." So, uh, applications are agricultural applications, sensors that you're going to put on on agricultural products. Here in Spain, uh, well, I am actually in Spain today, where we are discussing putting that on olive trees. Uh, there are millions of olive trees, and, and they they need to uh, supervise that the the trees are are irrigated properly, and that information now is coming from space. Uh, it can be to supervise pipelines, gas pipeline, oil pipelines. Then in the middle of the desert, it can be to track cargo in the middle of the sea. Uh, so anyway, so it's endless IoT application. I mean, it's basically a combination between 
satellite and earth stations. Uh, we use LoRa, uh, which is a very extended uh, protocol on uh, verification of signals. And um, the idea is to provide global traceability in real time for every object that has an IoT device. The, uh, what we did uh, in, in, in plus of that is to say, if we are able to verify the uh, the, uh, the, the, the chip which is stored in the object, what about if we issue an NFT directly into the blockchain and we mint the NFT from space? Uh, so what we did, uh, we used this uh, unique opportunity to, uh, we team with uh, Brooke Chills, a celebrity in the United States, uh, she uh, she wanted to. She has been doing her entire career. Uh, uh, you know, her data, pictures, and everything has been uh, is, is, is stolen without her authorization and published on data. So she wanted to 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 make the point that you could secure uh, her personal uh, data and pictures and videos with uh, encryption and mint them into blockchain so that she could create NFTs of that content. And then what we did is that we minted actually real time uh, the NFT from the satellite. We, we, we wait until the satellite was crossing the United States. And from that angle, we just created a key and that key was recorded in a Casper Labs uh, blockchain. And that was uh, broadcasted in, in, in Times Square and the, and the NASDAQ event uh, was an opening uh, bell ceremony. So it, it was a way to show uh, how this technology can work in the extreme. But what is gonna happen in, in the future, this is gonna be uh, for any kind of usage. I mean, you could uh, imagine FedEx, uh, parcel being tracked by satellite, so you you they ensure that the parcel then the left from the. Um the store facility is the same one you are getting. Imagine terrorists uh, modifying the parcel or, or uh, de disrupting the supply chain process. So the uh, the possibilities are endless, and, and the world is working towards that. The price is now very accessible. You can uh, you can put this technology for less than a dollar in a parcel uh, or in a, in an object. So obviously um, now is the time where um, companies are are willing to make that type of investment. Thank you. That, that's very interesting. So um, I, I guess, I don't know if you've talked about this before, but, um, you know, how long until you have, you know, a significant portion of the oceans or, you know, agriculture or rural land um, covered and accessible from, you know, these satellite launches? I mean, it doesn't need to be only our satellites. Uh, we, we did it our satellites because uh, we, we wanted to uh, create our own constellation for our own pr uh, private uh, and personal company usage. So we test technology real time. But you, you can do the same thing with the Starlink. I mean, you can team with existing constellations uh, in the space. I, I think what, what, the, what the uniqueness is now that before it cost you $20 million to send a satellite, now you can do it for $200,000. Um, and I, I think that's one of the major contribution of SpaceX is has been to democratize the access to the space, right? So companies like Wiseki uh, now can have our own constellation as we are sending the satellites with them, right? At the same time, they send Starlink satellites. So it's a very open um, way of, of letting even competitors to, to, to use their that, that access to the space. Um, I think uh, as we move forward in this uh, technology, um, the uh, interoperability between satellite connection is going to be uh, universal because there are international standards that they are being set up so satellites can communicate with satellite in the same way that if I go to the United States and I can run me with my mobile phone, even if I don't have a subscription with your telco carriers, right? So um, what uh, with a constellation of 80 satellites, for instance, you can cover the world real time and you can track everything. So 80, we, we have already 20. Uh, we're going to be sending 80 by the end of the, uh, eight, eight of the year. We also team with a startup uh, where we also investors with the name FOSA, uh, which is a um, um, design some, uh, satellite um, uh, module. So it, it, is a, it is an industry which is fascinating. And uh, it is an industry also that, uh, as you know, for military purposes, uh, armies and others are developing their own uh, space division. Uh, as a way to to use the space as soon as possible you know i mean space is going to be the next next battlefield and and we need to be secure there thank you um so maybe if we could also touch on um you have a platform called wise id um what is that how are you um 
is that a consumer product? Is it a business product? And you know, what does it do for us? So, so why study? Um, it, it is both. It's actually a B two B and a B two C. Um, so, so in the B two B will be an enterprise that uh, they want to issue digital certificate to their staff because you are working remote from home. Uh, so you want to be sure that all the communications from from your house to, to your enterprise is secure, and uh, you have uh, an authenticated access to your databases and CRMs and uh, and information in a way that is encrypted. So we provide. Wise ID, digital certificates, and certification authorities uh, as an enterprise play. This is very similar to what uh, Verisign will do or where DigiCert will do. Uh, the, the uniqueness uh, in our case is that uh, as, as cybersecurity is becoming very nationalistic now, you see what is happening, having a, a Swiss company that is neutral in the way we handle cybersecurity, it, it is also, uh, it is a much better way to, to sell in countries like in Asia, like uh, in Europe, like in Germany, that, that they are not covered by the American uh, cybersecurity companies. Um, the other the other aspect is the is what we call the wise idea as as your own password certificate type of security right uh, it's a lot of people then they use uh, Facebook connect or Twitter ID or Google ID as a way to single sign on on everything you know these messages and say if you want to continue just uh, do you want to use your Google ID and you will do that automatically without really uh, thinking too much about it but every time you do that you are creating more dependency on these uh, players right so that means on the day that for any reason you don't want to use Facebook anymore or Google anymore, anymore then all your credentials disappear right so our view is that users should have control on their digital identity uh, what we call basically your digital uh, password and that identity should be you, you yours and you can single sign on with your digital identity anywhere in the world you want with any kind of ser services without losing control of your personal data and, and digital identity and that is uh, is an interesting business model now emerging because people are realizing that their data has value uh, and they are not able to monetize that value if their identity is being uh, is being controlled by your platform provider so if you take that under your control then the next thing you can do is to you can you can monetize your consent you, like you want uh, to access my data or your my pii then you give me something give me a discount give me a, a points give me crypto give me uh, uh, whatever um, i want to share with with you the digital value of my data so that's what you can only do if you have a a wise id type of certificate so um it, it is is a, is a trend that is emerging actually uh wise id certificate is also the way uh we uh we uh, we ask our clients to register before they enter into the uh, nft platform so wise key because we want to avoid what happened with OpenSea and a few others, and they have lost a lot of NFTs. They, a lot of un un unauthorized people enter into the platform. They create a lot of disturbances inside the platform. In our case, only users with uh, um, a verified identity can access the platform, and, and they have also they have to certify it as well, uh, like you do in a KYC process, who they are, where the money comes from, uh, as a way to be sure that whatever you're doing in the platform is is clean and you're not bringing dark money or, or, or this kind of issues on some platform, uh, they, they still process, yeah. Seems like a pretty different way to, to build or you know, kind of design an NFT platform. So um, can you talk a little bit about what you're learning from, I think you've, you've had something for about running for two or three months now uh, that's been live. So uh, you know, is the market taking to that concept of, you know, authenticity and identity um, and you know what's the reaction so far yeah what, what, what we actually learn is that cybersecurity companies are ideal players to develop those platforms you know because when you are not a cybersecurity platform and you're trying to develop an nft you, you're going to enter into all the issues cybersecurity companies know how to solve right like uh, encrypting your data providing authentication for the user um, being able before you mint the nft to verify that the object is a, is a is a is a real object so the provenance certification so all that is 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 
um, technology that we use for many other things, even before thinking about NFT. So that's why we advanced so fast. Actually, in less than a year, we built Wise.art, which is our NFT platform. We have now like 400 artists in the platform. We have about $65 million or NFT value in the platform and growing something like 300% per month now. Um, so so um, the, the model is, is actually straightforward. We provide everything. We provide the uh, technology. We provide the platform. You provide the art as a user or the... Uh, or a, a, when I say art, it can be any 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 fungible asset. Basically, uh, in some cases, like paintings, and uh, we have a lot of art which are physical art actually. And so we put microchips in the physical art as a way to certify the digital twin, uh, which is the NFT, and be sure that the NFT corresponds to the original. It's not a fake NFT. And uh, and then we provide the uh, KYC uh, process to verify that the transaction and even the money, the wallets. Uh, uh, use on that transaction, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's clean money. So what we learn is that, that uh, cybersecurity is the major driver for this revolution. And what we also learn that if you do NFTs of art, you can do NFT of intellectual property, you can do NFT of patents, you can do NFT of uh, clinical trials, you can do NFT of inventions. So NFT is not only art, it's not only the first generation of NFTs, right? We did uh, several world first. We did a world first. We sold uh, one watch for $2 million NFT without selling the original. So that was amazing. And, and that is all also opening now um, new, new, new possibilities for like designers, and they are now designing directly NFTs without even doing the watch. I mean, you might want to buy the NFT of the watch, and the new generation might not even be inclined anymore to buy the watch itself. You know, because the watch has diamonds and gold and uh, and and things, and they are not sustainable for the planet. So some people are preferring now to to use the NFTs and, and just show that they want to have a digital asset without need to own the original. Uh, imagine real estate in the future. Um, Chanel is announcing NFT for uh, designing your avatar. Uh, so you can buy Chanel clothes for your avatar without ever being able to touch the, the tissue itself. Uh, so so uh, the verification that this is actually from Chanel is going to be very important because anyone could design a Chanel uh, dress for your avatar, which could be a fake one. So this is going to drive the industry of verification and traceability. And that's gonna, uh, is gonna be a very good uh, way to uh, uh, convince brands as well to put the, uh, the effort to make their objects less uh, easy to counterfeit. You know, we are still uh, in a $2.5 trillion economy, which is a fake economy, it's counterfeiting product, illicit trade, you know? This is a very big problem. This is 5% of the global GDP now that this goes into counterfeiting objects and, and and, and at the, uh, many years ago, when I started to convince the brands to put security on their objects, they say, oh, well, why are we going to bother doing that? This is a cost to us. Now they are actually realizing that this is the only way to protect their consumers. And they are much more inclined to do that because they see a benefit immediately in the metaverse, right? If I put some security on the physical object, that security is immediately converting into an NFT and therefore can populate the metaverse that this organization is building. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to go back to, um, uh, you know, I, I saw a news report today that, you know, there was a border gateway protocol, um, you know, maladvertisement, I guess, where uh, some routes were misadvertised, uh, not to be technical, but basically it's, authenticity of traffic seems to be important that when, you, you know, if, if a ISP is doing something wrong and trying to request traffic, that it shouldn't be getting. Uh, how do you, how does PKI, how does your technology determine that, hey, you know, when I'm trying to communicate with Twitter or Google, I'm communicating with the right platform? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the first line of defense there is SSL certification, secure socket layer, which is the uh, making sure that the hardware you're talking is, is, is the real hardware, you know? So uh, uh, it, it has happened so many times that, that people say, oh, but I, I've been, I've been uh, hacked or I have been uh, defrauded uh, because I make a payment. And, and when we ask them, are you using HTTPS? Just there, 
you know, where you are just installing a, a root certificate into into the uh, uh, into your browser or into your uh, website to be sure that you are talking to the right website. So that's the first layer. You know, if you have a, 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 a only you access a website or hardware, then they are um, they provide the uh, the hardware security at the certification level. This is a way to reduce ninety nine percent of the issues related to unauthenticated traffic. Right, because you can tell that this traffic comes from an authenticated device or hardware. The, the problem is that because mobile phones uh, are so interactive, people in our days don't check that anymore, right? And and and, and there is where I think the responsibility of uh, ISPs and and and, the, and telcos in particular, some of them they don't do that job very well, is to only uh, authorize traffic from authenticated hardware. You know, so. So it will be very easy to just program your backend infrastructure, just say, I, I only want to receive uh, things that come from an HTTPS certifiable uh, hardware. And if I click on the S, which is a small uh, seal that you get in your, in your browser, you can open a window that says, OK, this comes from Visa. Uh, the CA is Visa New York office. And, and then you can follow the chain of trust. And and then you you trust the uh, the communication because coming from a, from an authenticated source, that's 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 basically the foundation of, of the entire wise key infrastructure. You know, we only talk to uh, authenticated users and authenticated device and authenticated servers. I mean, we are we are in a cyber war environment. People don't realize that uh, this is not only tanks and drones and, uh, and, 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 and planes that they are attacking, right? Uh, this is the, um, the internet is, is highly uh, vulnerable uh, and users on the internet are using the internet in our days for very complex transactions without having the uh, knowledge and the uh, and the um, technology that protects that, right? Uh, and, and because the uh, technology is exponential, so this is going every day faster and faster, and humans, we are lineal, so we have a step by step. Uh, it, is, it is a battle that is very difficult to win because by the time the technology uh, expands, or knowledge or, uh, and capability of accepting to that exponentiality is very reduced. So uh, people obviously take advantage of that. But that's why I think it's great that what um, decisions have been made now in the United States and European Union as well, uh, to invest heavily on cybersecurity and, 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 and create uh, even audits. Um, we are here talking in, in Europe now to create a cybersecurity audit that companies will have to uh, provide on yearly basis in the same way that you audit your financial records uh, to, to, to guarantee that your company is, is secure so you are not a threat to your consumers, to your clients, to your shareholders. So, so we are going to get there very soon, right? Cybersecurity is, is a number one priority now. It wasn't there before. Before it was like, I, I already put my, my money on marketing than on cybersecurity, right? That was the reaction I found in, in, in my career. Now, now this is changing, which is a great opportunity for cybersecurity companies like Wiseki and others, because um, they're going to grow much faster than before. Thank you. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Carlos, we're just about out of time. Um, so I, I want to thank you for for uh, sitting down with me virtually and uh, having this conversation. I think it's a very important one and uh, uh, very excited to be you know, covering WiseKey myself and uh, look forward to, to seeing where you go. Thank you and uh, pleasure to be uh, working with Maxim as well and with you, Matthew in particular. Look forward to continue the discussion.